Hey folks, welcome to the big board. Today we're going to have a quick look at Counterfat Magazine and drink this coffee. It's late in the afternoon and I am uh, flagging sadly. I recently expanded or extended my subscription to this magazine. And in part, it was because the, the Millennium Wars series by Brian Train was going to be in, uh, in the game, uh, in the magazine. And I thought, you know what, I really want to play some more Brian Train games, so why not get this magazine? Now, I think the... So let's just go through the magazine, have a look at it, and then we'll have a look at the game and the map and the counters and the rules and all that sort of good stuff, and we'll go forward from there. But first things first. So having said that, uh, that I you know, re-upped, I didn't uh, cancel my subscription for any reason other than I just really wasn't that excited about yet another magazine. I read a couple of issues, and the first one was a little blowhardy, uh, if there's such a word as that. But uh, the second one was actually quite good, and this one is very, very interesting. So I think there's been a definite, uh, I guess, yeah, evolution of the magazine as things go along. And I'm going to apologize now for the, for the noisy chair, because I've got the squeaky, squeaky wooden chair. Uh, packaging. Like, I, I've said this of many of the magazine vendors, and I understand that we're all uh, dealing with margins and things like that. Uh, but you know this uh, bank corners and whatnot. No bag, no way to store the counters or protect the map or anything. Nothing stiff inside to uh, protect the magazine is a little disconcerting. As you can see, this arrived in beautiful shape. Nothing to worry about this time. Second one I received, I was not so uh, I was not so lucky. So let's have a quick look at the magazine and check it out and see what the story is. Nice thick cover, like very heavy stock cover. Uh, really enjoy that. It's not like Life magazine. It's more, it's almost more like a, I'm trying to think of the right word, uh, you know, perhaps a cover for a writing pad or something like that. That's how heavy it is. A nice ad for Second World War magazine at strategic level, you know, just what we need. Another strategic level World War II game. Seems to be a massive crop of those. I'm waiting for someone to tell me what the critical one is, and I will go buy it. Uh, okay, so the, the index, let's have a quick look at this. I've already read this article, Arab-Israeli Wars 47 through 82, and particularly because I just got back uh, from uh, Tel Aviv, I spent a week there and uh, was down on the waterfront. The you know, It was the evening before, so there was no danger or anything. But uh, I was down on the coast in Jaffa when the uh, most recent attack occurred. That was disconcerting. Reading this and having spent seven hours with a guide going through Jerusalem and uh, discussing the history of Israel was very fascinating and reading this I had a lot more context and nuance than perhaps I would have if I had not have done that trip recently for my work. Uh, the next War in the Middle East is an interesting article. I got halfway through that one so far. Haven't had a look at this yet and then I think uh, there's some obviously some good stuff uh, going on here, right? Some other things. So we will uh, look at this article. It's really well laid out. Oh, can you see everything just okay? I think again. I don't know who William Strook is, but he is uh, quite succinct and pretty accurate. When I say pretty accurate, he's accurate as far as I can tell, right? Uh, I'm saying pretty accurate because you know, he may well have made mistakes, so I don't know. Nice maps. These maps look a lot like uh, kind of infographic maps that come off of uh, one, of the, one of the military history uh, public domain sites. Uh, these ones in particular. These ones here are a little different. As you can see, very, very interesting uh, format and layout. Really goes into a lot of nice detail uh, of each of the individual offensives and the battles. Uh, and uh, this uh, summer 2006 conflict is discussed. 
and uh, conclusions are, are drawn. Now, I have not read this, so I can't really give much insight on what's going here, going on here. But I like the layout and the format. I think it's talking more about. This is uh, talking more about capabilities, from what I recall of reading it, uh, reading the uh, the articles, than anything else. So, although various forces may have large armies, uh, some of them are not in particular, in particular, very very strong. So, uh, oh, I did read some of this. Now, this was a great uh, a great look at. Let me just move this out of the way. A great look at the firepower game, some of the, the games that preceded it and came after it. And there's a nice uh, me meeting engagement scenario uh, that's included by Sam Shiki. And in fact, this looks, oh gosh, I didn't know there was this here, so I didn't get this far in the magazine. So that's pretty awesome. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Look at that, new weapons and vehicles. Well, there, look, this is probably worth the price of admission right here. If you own firepower, which by the way is a fun game to play, and you can take that uh, game to any sort of level of detail you want to take it to. Uh, don't be uh, don't be intimidated by that magazine by any means. Uh, my magazine by that game by any means. There's a lot of little stuff that you can just ignore and uh, streamline the gameplay. Well, okay, I'm all over this like white on rice. Uh, Okay, so this is an article on expanding the game that came from one small step. Hmm. Oh, this is an article, but it's also including some rules as I skim through here, so we'll skip that for a minute. An article on... Uh... Oh, so look at me, I'm wrong, it's not a Brian Train game. Uh, and I knew that. Why did I know that? What made me think it was a Brian Train game? So my apologies. Uh, it's in fact a John Compton, Michael Anderson game. And Miranda's uh, got his fingerprint on this as well. And that's probably who I was thinking of. Sometimes I can confuse Miranda and Train uh, and the games they've made between each other. Anyway, uh, so I'm looking forward to reading this article and, and tying it together with the with the game now as you can see 57 58 pages of magazine articles and there's but there's not a lot of articles in here that but they're each one is very in-depth and uh, uh long right so let's have a quick look at the, the game here's the rules uh, pretty well laid out 20 pages of them Rules really get started around page or four or thereabouts, and the last handful of pages, two, four pages, are going to be these uh, events that occur, and then the appendices and stuff like that. Uh, so you know, there's um, not a lot of rules really to be digested. It's just going to depend. The tables are kind of all all through the rules though, which may be problematic for some game players. I have not started reading the rules yet. I have had a good look at the, a reasonable look at the, at the game. There's lots of little charts and things, so a scenario. There should be one on the back side of this as well. Yeah, there's another one there. And then you've got these uh, tr tables you've got to keep track of, the PLO and Hezbollah and Israel and Syria, etc. And then you have uh, these counters. These counters are, a decent thickness too for a magazine game, which is nice. And so I don't know if you can see those okay with the glare. So you've got these angled offset uh, armor, in artillery, infantry, mechanized, all that sort of good stuff, air forces. And then you've got the various uh, things that occur during the game, meet a devastation of uh, uh, urban areas, media coverage, events, chits that go, uh, are placed down and crashes uh, for uh, aircraft or choppers, whatever the case may be. And then on the back of the counters, here's where things get a little different. The back of the counters, you can see, 
that each of these different types of a unit can conduct different missions. So I don't know what all these missions are. That's when we were looking at the rules. You saw that big missions table and each of the missions was defined. That's all here, right? So that's a pretty interesting approach to unit capabilities, as the case may be. Now, if you thought that was funky enough, here is a map which some will love and some will think, oh my God, what happened, all right? It's, uh, I don't have the terrain chart handy. It's designed by the looks of it to be extended and joined with an, a future expansion at some point because it cuts off right here in a very abrupt manner. And in fact, on the other side as well. And this is uh, dealing with the area from Damascus, obviously to the coast with Beirut, down to Haifa. And I'm trying to look for another city name here. They're all hex numbers. I know you probably can just see the big glare spot right there. I'll try and hold this up like that. How's that? Uh, and it's a satellite rendering of, of the terrain. And this is a border. And uh, I believe these are actually some sort of main roads, as the case may be. So, hard to know without city names on here. I'm trying to get my bearings here. Tripoli, Beirut. Anyway, I, I'm, uh, it's a striking looking map. I'm not sure that it's very visually appealing to the eye with all the little red triangles on them. As you can see, how's that help? Yeah. So an interesting, uh, interesting set, interesting set of uh, maps, counters, uh, rules, and articles from the latest counterfact issue number three. And I uh, really like the, the, the structure of this magazine and the, and the format and the, uh, the content that was in it this time. Uh, really, really good. All right, that's a long video for a magazine. Talk to you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed that.